Hello, everyone. Welcome to whatever number episode this is of excessive pop culture discussion. This is the uh, weekly pop culture show where we talk about everything that is in the headlines that have nothing to do with news and the president. I'm always your host, Daniel O'Brien. With me, we could just this is my co-host, Maggie. <laughs> oh, congrats. Uh, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Joining us for the first time is Bridget Greenberg. Hey. Excited to be here. Yeah. Welcome. We have a lot of things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about Game of Thrones, Ned Sheeran, and Harry Potter, and a little bit of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the new Confederate show. So let's just get right into the week in headlines. <laughs> With Ed Sheeran. This is sort of a Ooh. recurring topic because we've talked about both Game mm-hmm. of Thrones and distracting singers in yep. movies and TV shows. And Sunday was the premiere of Game of Thrones. Ed Sheeran played a guy <laughs> with maybe three lines on screen for uh, like nine minutes in one of the sweetest Game of Thrones scenes I have ever seen on that show. And uh, the internet hated him so much that he got sad and deleted his Twitter account. So he deleted his account? Yeah. Ah, what other move was he gonna make? That's not surprising in any way, shape, Do or form. Do you think so? I am surprised that he deleted it just because, like, he's a celebrity. People are going to hate half of the things that he does no matter what. Yeah. That's he, pretty extreme. I feel me. like his his fan base loves him so much yeah. that he doesn't expect any sort of vitriol. Hey, I man. think there's a level of, right. like, pop star fame that you get, to where you're like, people are mean on the yeah. internet and it surprises you. It's still strange because the internet yeah. didn't seem super unified on this. There were a lot of people who were so angry that they <laughs> drove him insane. Yeah. Uh, and a whole lot of people who had no opinion on his cameo. I had no opinion on his cameo in the show at yeah. all. I like privately don't like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> um, but I see him like he's singing a song and I see his face in the show and it's like oh this is probably fun for Ed Sheeran fans and the rest of us can just go ahead and not give a but yeah. the internet was not going to stand yeah. for Yeah, well, that's uh, probably because you have things to do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, oh, the faction God. of the oh, internet right. <laughs> that got mad at that was like, yeah. well, that stood out to me. Let yeah. me think too hard about this. Okay. And bully pop but, star Ed Sheeran. But what did you think when you saw him? Because you hate singers in movies and stuff. I do. This, yeah. one, this one did irk me a little bit. Again, it just reminds me of like product placement. Like mm-hmm. when I'm yeah. watching a movie, I don't want to see that... Uh, Andrew Garfield drinks a milk chug before uh, Ben dies. I'm talking about a specific movie. <laughs> That's it, Uncle Ben. Uh, that happened. <laughs> yeah, this was definitely like Game of Thrones, kind of like overreaching, being like, we're a popular show, look who we can get. Yeah. I think that it, like, it was, it stood out. Yeah, but then uh, again, I, I know that Ed Sheeran loves this show. Um, and also, they have done this with bands before who love this show. Yeah. Right. Um, and write songs for them. So I think there's just a little bit of crossovers. Like, oh, let's take those bands who like to write music for us and yeah. let's get Ed Sheeran. Like, I think Scott Ian is in an episode, and I know Coldplay is. They, they, yeah, the uh, reigns of. They do the reigns of Castamere uh-huh. yeah. in an episode, and no one seemed to mind about that. But, I, but right. Ed Sheeran is in that weird sweet spot right now where he's incredibly popular and I think has reached a tipping point of people who kind of know who he is. Right. Mm. Deciding they've found common ground and hating him with other people. <laughs> Together, we <laughs> bend. Yeah, I feel like when other people did that in that show, though, they they stayed in their lane mm-hmm. with it. Like That's Coldplay true. just did the opening song, and they didn't, you didn't do it know in a it way. was Coldplay. You didn't they, right. They, they, they didn't like, like zoom in on Chris Martin, right. Being like, this wedding sure is red. <laughs> yeah. like uh, with Ed Sheeran, uh, or however you pronounce his name, it's, it's Ed. like Ed. Mm. What a funny name. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Uh, they're like, let's give him a moment to be him. Because when I was watching the show, and hot take for the internet, mm-hmm. the show's sometimes boring. Mm. Uh, <laughs> True. I don't feel like anybody's come out and said that, but I'll be the brave one. Sometimes <laughs> it's boring. Once in a while. Uh, so I dozed off a little bit <laughs> okay. and uh, woke up around the time. I was like, I, I heard singing, and I was like, that's not the show we were watching. How long have I been asleep for? <laughs> <laughs> and then saw Ed Sheeran and I was like, oh, there's a music video. Oh. Was it, it took me a very long time to realize what this show was doing. Mm. Did you um, do our Game of Thrones recap show this week? I did not. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> in the future when you do. Don't fall asleep during the show. Please. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> doing fake it gets oh, no. very boring. Okay. Uh, kind of a soft yes on that one. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, Ed Sheeran is is really sad and left Twitter. But uh, mm-hmm. I think we learned that back. this is hmm? he'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. yeah he's a this is like we'll the third him. or fourth oh, yeah. time that he's left Twitter over yeah. people being mean to him on the internet. Which I mean, sure. You think he'd be I, used like, to it. Well, yeah. uh, either stay uh, off Twitter or find the mute button. It's really easy to find. Yeah. yeah. Or just block or like, block it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't can't stand the heat. Get. Yeah. Get off the internet. Also, I'm sorry, there's no way he was not bullied in high, high school, right? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't he be yeah. used to this? Well, let's... <laughs> is that, well, that victim blaming? Walk, walk me through. Yeah. I think yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, there's a certain amount of, back. like, getting bullied points that a person can acquire, <laughs> and then it's just like, well, you can't complain about this anymore because you're so used to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> That's how I feel about myself. All right, let's oh. move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. We also... Oh, you wanted to... I wanted to... Speaking of... Bullying, the, uh, all the nerds who give a big hot <laughs> shit about Harry Potter are real excited. Yeah! <laughs> <Because of> something. <laughs> I feel like we're being real aggressive <laughs> towards a uh, beloved <laughs> series on this episode. All right. Mm-hmm. I love Harry Potter. Yeah. Okay, so, oh yeah, so bit of news. Um, there are going to be two more Harry Potter books. Who saw this coming? Mm-hmm. Everybody, spoiler alert. Um, so, two books. Uh, one is called um, Harry Potter, The History of Magic. Uh, and there's going to be a second, smaller companion book called Harry Potter and Air Journey Through the History of Magic. So it's basically the same book. One is a little bit thicker for adults. One's a little bit uh, thinner for kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you have to buy both because uh, more money. Uh, but so, yeah, we're getting two more Harry Potter books. The two things that I think about this is one, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, wasn't a train of thought coming back in. <laughs> okay, the first thing I think about this is that uh, you got bored thinking about how boring it's bored. <laughs> I know. Well, one, the books don't seem that exciting. I'm, what are they course, about? They're about. They're just gonna. One is gonna be about uh, just like Harry Potter, like objects and the history of them, and like learning about the Sorcerer's Stone and okay. J.K. Rowling's like um, sketches in the right. books. Is it? So we're- is it a narrative at all? Or no, is it, it's not just, narrative. It's just a textbook yeah. about a beloved children's story. Yes, it is, it's a textbook. Okay. Samarillion-esque, if you will. <laughs> but wasn't uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them also a non-narrative uh, like companion textbook type thing? Yes. That has since been turned into five narrative movies. With yes. Our most famous people. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, and leading to my point, it's just it's never gonna stop. I think right. when we when we got the last Harry yeah. Potter book, everyone's like, oh, like there will never be another book. This is a huge right. moment. It's not. We've had a million more movies. We're getting many more books. Uh, I don't know why we're being coy and dancing around this idea that J.K. Rowling is not going to eventually do another right. continued adventure of. Ron, Harry, Hermione, Ginny, Draco, uh, and all the rest. Think, yes. But Cedric. I would, Cedric. I would rather that. Can't like, do Cedric. <laughs> can't do Cedric? No. Oh, boy. Spoilers. Oh, then uh, that other one, that, He's that, super uh, dead. the surprising super one dead. that got real handsome. Who did? Neville. Neville. Neville, Neville got handsome. He's, yes, yeah, he's, he's handsome, handsome now. Uh, yeah, we're going to be getting this to Kingdom Come. Uh, Which is fine. Like, if you're, if, you're, if you're J.K. Rowling, like, R.L. Stein announced, guess what, I'm going to do more Goosebump books. And finally, great, thank yeah, you. You can do them forever, I'll always, I'll always take them. J.K. Yeah. Rowling, you can do more Harry Potter books. No one's going to be mad. Right? Lots of people will be happy and keep right. buying them. Yeah. I don't understand the strange strategy of, I'm done um, with Harry Potter, except for these two books that have Harry Potter in the title, and then will then be 11 <laughs> movies and have tie-in yeah. things at Harry right. Potter World. Yeah, it's, I feel uh, like with... Goosebumps, like, I'm excited for Let's Goosebumps. Let's get into it. <laughs> well, Goosebumps is fine because uh, R.L. Stein is going to release stories, mm. not her world building or her notes. Uh, yeah. I feel like sometimes when you write, you write to get into it, you just write everything around the story. Mm-hmm. I feel like J.K. Rowling is now making us read all her, like, brainstorming ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if she yeah. was just, like, free associating on paper and she's like, I can publish this and make some money now. Yeah. Like, here's I, some made-up colors. It's a book! Right. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get into writing. Here, read my procrastination. Which is fine. I mean, yeah. George R. R. Martin does that, too, but he does it, like, within the Game of Thrones book. So she just needs right. to take that extra step and, and like, 
work out a book in real time. Yeah. Add in your details and your false starts, and then you yeah. know, boom, you have a, another Harry Potter book. Right. And the yeah. the other uh, point I wanted to bring up was that in the press release it said. This will be a great gift for uh, a family member. I was well, like, aha, that's it. Uh, it's, it's just a moneymaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anytime something yeah. is described like that, it's you, you're not gonna want this because it's like empty calories. Right. But you know your your cousin who who goes ape shit for Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah, get her two of these. It's yeah. Fine. She's weird enough. Just yeah. get her this book. <laughs> these also, I <laughs> remember making a mistake in my youth trying to buy a Harry Potter book and buying something similar. Instead, oh, no. buying like some ancillary. That's not your fault. There were so many. There were so many, so she so already many. did this. Yeah. Did you, was it Aragon? It was, <laughs> I read all of those. <laughs> it was that Aragon. Of my life. It had the Harry Potter font. It was, <laughs> it was the premiere. I, did, I didn't like completely swing and miss. It, it was, was in the there. stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I read The oh, Road man. instead. It was rough childhood. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> that was a bad. Yeah. Bad, bad mistake. Yeah. Uh, no, she's done this before while Harry Potter. The series was running, mm -hmm. and now she's out of ideas and doing it again. I don't know. Well, there is uh, in the Harry Potter universe there is the history of magic, which Hermione refers to every other page. Mm -hmm. uh, right, but Hermione's a nerd, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's boring well, stuff." Okay, no one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, and like everyone in the book is like, "Oh, you born nerd? No one's gonna read that." Yeah, except the. Your cousin on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's cousins on Christmas will read yeah. this book. Did you have another headline for us, Cool Bridget? Uh, yeah. This is uh. There's not a lot to say about it, I don't think. But there's not a ton to say about it. But it should be brought into the zeitgeist that Felicity <laughs> Jones uh, will be playing Ruth Bader Ginsburg in a biopic. Is there a way to do Ruth Bader Ginsburg without doing a caricature? Because she does wear very funny glasses. She does. Uh, she does. Uh, and has a Brooklyn Jewish accent, which I don't know how Felicity Jones is going to pull uh, that one off. Yeah. That, uh. She's also, I, I wonder about the timing of this because there's there's talk of her retiring and, and like maniacs on the internet are, right. are sending out these petitions that are like, sign this if you want. Ruth Bader Ginsburg right. to die as a judge yeah. right now and never retire. Like there's people yeah. who like definitely oh, okay. want to keep yeah, her yeah. There. And I understand the motivation behind that, but still yeah. like let her live, everybody. Yeah, right. Um, so I don't know if this movie is like, we all love you so much. Here's 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 proof. We want right. you to stick around. We're gonna celebrate you. So please stick mm. around. It also seems ominous. Uh, mm -hmm. That they're making a biopic. Uh, it always feels yeah. weird when they make Is a biopic. Is it weird when they do it before they die? I mean, it's so. not the well. first time it happens, but it always feels weird when it, it always does. Feels weird. Johnny uh, Cash, that biopic was like right on the tail. He died like when, yeah. when that was coming of, out. Uh, yeah. Ray Charles, I think, shortly after that movie, but I'm not positive. I'm sure right. the internet will. Yeah, for Correct. be mean, yeah. beat me up, make yeah. me make me delete Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All the men I know are gone. <laughs> it's, <laughs> get it. it's me and Ed so Sheeran, yeah. the men that you know. Yes. Those two. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. I mean, Barack Obama has two biopics, but. That's true. Oh, yeah. Stephen Hawking, still, still around. Still around. Yeah, yeah. still good. Yeah. All right. Uh, not that weird, I guess. But yeah, uh, she just seems like a weird choice for RBG. I don't. It, yeah, she seems like a weird choice. Uh, I also don't. Uh, unfortunately, know enough about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life to right. know, like, that, that I'm sure no one she does. has a cool story, but yeah. I don't know what it is. Me neither. Yeah, well, it's not like she saved NASA or anything right. like it can that. Be. But she wasn't interesting enough. But yeah, it's there, not like yeah. There have been few, other than Dread, very few cool judge stories. Like, they're, like yeah. it's not mm -hmm. it's not a path that, especially a Supreme right. Court judge, it's not a path that. Uh, biographically lends itself to, and then I was yeah. in the jungle for years. Right. And then right. I did this, and then I decided reading. let's settle down and go to law school forever and right. be a judge in some smaller court and work my way up. Not a lot strange. of great judge movies, but some great law school movies. Sure. That is true. Yeah. Uh, legally maybe blonde. legally blonde. That's, okay. uh, that's all I got. Okay. And you both knew that. Oh, so there's one yeah. good law school, school movie. movie. There's got to be others, but uh, I think they're all blown out of the water by Legally Blonde and maybe this uh, RBG biopic. Maybe RBG. Yeah. 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 Holding out hope that that's our next Legally Blonde. What if? Uh, though? Then they'll, they'll turn it into a musical. Mm hmm. I didn't see Legally Blonde, but I only saw the musical. I assume the biopic is going to be a musical. I mean, 
I'd watch her dance. Lots of no. things rhyme with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We don't need to get into it right now because we don't have time. Ginsburg. So let's just get into the main story. I can't think of one thing that rhymes with Ginsburg. I think I, I think I was going for some kind of like Ginsburg. Truth hater Ginsburg, but like Ooh. even that's not no. but like that's also not what judges Truth. are. Yeah. Truth. <laughs> Truth hater. <Yeah. laughs> But All right. It's been on a picket sign. Yeah, I'm, and it's it's a free idea if anyone wants to troll that 900 year old woman who served this nation. Uh, the guys behind the Game of Thrones TV show, Weiss and Benioff, mm -hmm. have announced their new show. It's not a Game of Thrones show. It's mm -hmm. called Confederate, and per AV Club, it takes place in an alternate timeline where the South won the Civil War and successfully seceded, <laughs> resulting in a divided America where slavery remains legal and has evolved into a modern institution. Uh, it's like Game of Thrones. Like Game of Thrones, the show promises a vast array of characters on yeah. <laughs> both sides of the Mason-Dixon demilitarized zone. There will be freedom fighters and the people who are like corporate heads of plantations, I suppose, yeah. that this show thinks will still exist. There are problems with the show. Everyone no. on the internet immediately, yeah. for obvious reasons, no, we don't need to see this. Like, it's... it's right. Off the bat, that was a, bad a idea. real possibility yeah. at one point in right. American history. And I don't think yeah. we're we're yeah. we're exactly at a place where <laughs> people need to imagine like, what would it be like if white people still control just about everything? Yeah, like yeah. That, can you imagine? <laughs> not necessarily uh, a like an escape that I need to make. Right. right. Now. Imagine yeah. if slavery still exists, which in some mm. forms it does. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah my favorite uh, tweet, and I can't remember who wrote it, so I'll, I'll write it in the comments when we post this, uh, but my favorite tweet was someone replied to it and was like, oh, so you mean the prison system? <laughs> right. It was it's, like, yeah. It's a very uh, sad, very true thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also like, I, a lot of people who are smarter at this than I am are spending a lot of time talking about the, the, the social stupidity of doing this particular yep. show right mm -hmm. now in this particular time. I, as like a detached robot, also have the other reasons that this hypothetical doesn't really work out for me is that if, if the South won the Civil War, what would that be like? Well, another Civil War would happen. Or we would right. do enough, yeah. like, if the South had won the Civil War, right. we would still eventually not have slaves anymore. Like, yeah, like, it, that's, right. Time would still Yeah, that immediately crossed, I guess, my robot mind too, right. which was like, We're all robots, yeah, we, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it would end at some point. Like, we wouldn't have gotten this far. Right, we would have figured with that it out. Version or of one slavery. of the other right. countries would emerge as the number one global yeah. superpower mm -hmm. because there were also a lot of very reasonable socioeconomic mm -hmm. reasons to end slavery. Like, that, that was more than just about, yeah. uh, like, we want to, believe it was mm -hmm. pure intention of a bunch of abolitionists and people who were like, let's free the slaves, this is wrong, they're human beings, and that was certainly a, a part of it. But another huge part of it was, this will be good for the economy mm -hmm. if we don't have slavery anymore. Yeah. Right, and also, uh, part of the reason the South lost is they ran out of money, which also would have happened right. Right. if they won the Civil money. War. Yeah. Yeah. America then would have run out of money. Right. Uh, so in no universe. Mm -hmm. But this is does... one that uh, none of that happened. So okay. they're okay. just going to be taking a bunch of other ridiculous leaps that, Yeah. I don't know, I just can't, it's, yeah. it's stupid for social reasons. It's stupid for like, if you wanted to actually engage in that hypothetical, right. it mm -hmm. wouldn't happen. Uh, and right. these, the two white guys from Game of Thrones who had like, three black characters across six seasons right, and like, known we're for, really excited yeah. to tackle this. Yeah, and known for writing gratuitous rape scenes. Right, known for writing gratuitous like, rape scenes. And I'll, uh, there's a great article, if you guys haven't read it, it's a um, Black Person's Guide to Game of Thrones. It's <laughs> hilarious and just points out all that. Uh, I, it yeah. is the, I don't think it's a good idea mm -hmm. also, but I will say, like, I think the same argument could have been made for, like, Handmaid's Tale, and that turned out great. Like, yeah. oh, did we really need to see, like, more women, you know, being right. treated poorly? Mm -hmm. It's a very different take, and I yeah. even don't really want to compare the two, but, you know, like, that did turn out to be great. And also, I do think that they picked um, two great people to work with, the showrunner of uh, The Good Wife and uh, Empire. So right. and I it's feel based like they on want to make it good and they want yeah. to avoid those social things that everyone was immediately like yeah. hello but can they do it 
on a, right. another question. These don't seem like the people to do it. And <laughs> HBO is going to throw $10 million an episode at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So really seems like a big leap for them. It seems like a big leap. It's also like you, I do like their other showrunners and uh, I, this is more qualifier for, for audience that mm-hmm. uh, nothing has come out about this show yet. Yeah. We have like a brief synopsis of it. We don't know right. who's in it. We don't know like what is right. really going on with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is... You know, it's our job as people who have a weekly pop culture show. Uh, <laughs> that is our job. To try to yeah. figure it out. To like wildly speculate <laughs> on things until uh, I get too sweaty under the lights and, and abruptly wrap things up. That yeah. is, that's a secret of how every show ends. Is yeah. He gives a secret signal <laughs> it's yeah. far too sweaty. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, stop. Yeah, the, it's, uh, the sweat seeps into the chair and <laughs> yeah. then the lights start flicking. It's like, oh, okay, that's it. That's <laughs> no more time for reader comments this week. It's no longer safe to be on this set. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it also seems a weird, uh, just a weird idea for them to want to do. Right. Because, right. It, uh, because Man in the High Castle, very similar um, setup, very similar right. plot, but that That's, was a book. Man in the High Castle, was that What If Nazis won? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing, different war. Like, did they, was this the, the best idea that they had? They sat down and they pooled a bunch of ideas. I mean, they said they were waiting. To, they were have been thinking about this for for a long time. Which <laughs> they were which, thinking, what if the South won? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just keep coming back to this. <laughs> they just had that I in just their can't back. Die. <laughs> well, that's what, what I find. Uh, most people who are like super fascinated by the Civil War mm-hmm. is. Uh, They've been thinking about what if the South won for quite some time. Right. Uh, yeah. It's and I'm I'm very mm-hmm. curious because again, Handmaid's Tale was great. Mm-hmm. Um, also based off a book, though. Right. Also, yes. these are there's precedent both. for it. Precedent. We know how it's gonna go. Exactly. Right. Immediately off the bat, we were like, "What if the South won?" Well, we, like, we <laughs> have to know how this is gonna go yeah. too. It will go one of two ways. Uh, <laughs> one of them is. Eventually, we fix this, and that's the good way. One of them is like, right. this is the story of the revolution where we do civil war again, except yep. it's the, the future now. Happens. And we st- like we are we agree what the right side of history is, so we'll right. just see that play out again, but in the future and with characters that yeah. we, we come to know and love. Um, or the alternative is the show wants us to think it's not so bad, and that's a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, but those are the two avenues this show could go down. Mm-hmm. Unless is there a thing, a third option that I'm missing? More of a mixed bag? Mediocrity, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, middle, right, down the middle. Picking no side, okay characters, <laughs> yeah. not attaching Right, anything. we just see, it's just 12 Years a Slave, the TV series. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, sounds torturous. Torturous. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the third option, which none of these are shows yeah. I can't imagine anybody being interested in. No. But... We're no. gonna have to watch them. Yeah, we're oh, gonna watch no. them and probably do a recap oh, show of yeah. them for cracked. So. Yeah. Man, having watched Westworld mm-hmm. and then that yeah. <laughs> for two hours of my life every week. Ooh. Uh, oh man. Did we know if this is this show coming out next year? Or is that do we not even know that at this point? It's just it somewhere down. The, it can't be. I mean, I. This is uh, my job here as a producer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking, and if they just announce it, like, be. <laughs> this, this does not seem like a project. They're going to turn around mm-hmm. in a year. Okay. Wow, I do wonder, and I but want I to have like an inside ear to know, okay, so right now they have an idea of what the show is going to be. A lot of people have come out and said their thoughts on this idea. Right. I wonder if they are going to take a lot of that and maybe change some things that they were thinking about or uh, if they're in their own little bubble and we're just gonna get exactly what they wanted. I wonder about that too. I wonder yeah. if, they, if there's if there's enough uh, internet and critical steam that they'd be like, you know what, let's back off this. We can make anything we want. Let's just right. do something right. else. But this is also the same team where the internet was screaming about them. It was like, hey, there's too much rape in your show. And they're like, ah, we got it. Yeah. Sansa, a word? <laughs> yeah. this, is, this, is, this is, I'm not sure yeah. they're, the, they're the best, uh, right. most receptive to people. Note. Yeah, and after coming off the high of Game of Thrones, uh, they're gonna be like, "You guys don't know what we're talking about. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna do this. We're gonna really class up the South." Yeah. Right. Which... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just, I, <laughs> yeah. oh, I just remember imagining how much they've made so much money out of rape scenes. Oh boy. <laughs> like that's hard to think about, but they have, and yeah, like yeah. their viewership did not drop because I watched all those scenes as well, even yeah. though I didn't like it, but. Yeah, you have to be like quite a humble person to be like, 
know what? We announced it, but we're not going to do it. We're gonna, we heard you. I'm going to back off now. And you know, if I was a creator of Game of Thrones, I'll be like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't it's have that. Like, yeah, I don't know if I would, but, but, but I hope one day I have that hot. in me, or like I have a consigliere, or, or I could be Game of Thrones guy, and like, you know what, I talked to someone in my family, and uh, I've gotten pretty mad with power, and <laughs> they give me a lot yeah. of money, and uh, it, it, uh, it talked to some people from my childhood, <laughs> they say this is an asshole move, I believe them, I'm too close right. to this, so I'm going to just back away for a little while, and yeah. Um, yeah. Do a different Not. dragon show. <laughs> Do a different dragon show. So that's what you guys wanted, right? Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Like, dragons thank you. That's what yeah. you all came for, right? I have made enough right. money that I thought I was post-racism, but I see now <laughs> I see. that that's not a thing. That's yeah. just like what me and other rich white people I can't people buy think. myself out of racism. Right. Yeah. I've tried. I yeah. can't. Well, we've made another episode of this show about race. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's hard. <laughs> the Civil War was, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About race. <laughs> I have a friend who grew up, oh no, uh, who just found out um, that the Civil War was, there were other things other than states' rights, that the Civil War was fought over. Just found out, like, months ago. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is troubling news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm glad. I don't know where you stumble up on that information now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because you're out of school and, and just no one's yeah. talking about... Right. Slavery. <laughs> I think that <laughs> is maybe why We assume so everyone knows about it. <laughs> right, well, and the only you know. Civil War books out there are like, yay thick. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like he had to be really into the Civil War. Did you say and that it was a he or are we assuming that a person who didn't know? It's a girl. It's a woman. Oh. Ha! Ha! Uh, girls can be stupid too. <laughs> oh, we absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At least one that we know of in this hypothetical. I'm sure she's very nice. <laughs> I don't know why I'm qualifying. She didn't know yeah. about slavery. I'm not on her side. Yeah. Uh, let's get into reader questions. No, she super knew about slavery. She knew about slavery. She didn't know about the other stuff? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm the dumb one then. <laughs> let's get away from uh, slavery <laughs> for a while. Twitter user at MJCanless625. Talk about the movie The Disaster Artist. And I know that oh. you wanted to talk about that anyway, so that's why this question is in here. I did. Oh, man. Oh, should I go first? Well, okay. let's, let's oh, catch people up on, what, okay. on everything that is going yeah. on here. Okay, so it is based off a book that the uh, lead actor of the famed movie... Uh, the Room. The Room uh, wrote about his experience filming The Room. Uh, and I am super... I'm very mm. excited about it. Uh, my friend out here casted it, uh, and she said it was one of the weirdest projects that they have ever worked on. Mm-hmm. Uh, casted the room or casted the uh, disaster artist? Oh, disaster artist. Okay. Um, I think it will be good because it is based off of a great memoir of this super right. weird thing yeah. that happened in history. Um, For anyone who doesn't know what the room was, there was uh, uh, a sort of an eccentric filmmaker with uh, possible Eastern European mafia ties named Tommy possible. Wiseau who yeah. got money from somewhere and made this passion project movie that he got a bunch of people that are not famous to be in. And it sort of took on a cult status in Los Angeles many years ago because in addition to like funding a movie and and renting out a theater for it all the time, he paid for these really big, uh, (laughs) bizarre, absurd billboards that boasted about this, this movie that no one knew anything about and the comedy scene in LA just sort of found it and, and got obsessed mm-hmm. with it. A lot of yeah. uh, the friends of our, our site, Michael Rusley and Scott Gardner, were at like the beginning of this movement of, what the f- I see this billboard for the room all the f-ing time, yeah. what is it? And then they go see it. This is an amazing <gasps> piece of like a new kind of right. art. No one knows if it's serious or not. No one uh-huh. can find any information about this Tommy Wiseau guy who like <laughs> no. refuses to disclose right. where he's from. And it just sort of grew and grew and grew into this yeah. big bizarre mm-hmm. cult thing. And uh, yeah. now James Franco is making a movie about a book about this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's many levels of weird art. Yeah, I think I like the levels. I, it could go very bad. It could yeah. be a very bad movie. There could be no mm-hmm. substance. The story could be like, what are they talking about? So it's a big risk. It is a big risk. Uh, the whole cult status of the room bothers me. The Whoa. whole like bad. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. The whole Bridget. bad film thing bothers me. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I remember uh, by the time this room movie reached East Coast film schools, people went crazy for it. Mm. And everyone's like, bad movie party with the room. And uh, meanwhile, I'm getting myself into just 
thousands and thousands right. of dollars of debt trying to oh, learn how to make... Oh, you're $950,000 in debt, debt for film school. Yeah, yeah. 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 trying yeah. to make good movies. Meanwhile, we're all running around obsessed with this truly awful piece of garbage yeah. movie, and it's a little bit take. frustrating sure. uh, That's so funny. to see it getting all this heat and like nonstop yeah. attention. I turned on him, I think, because yeah. I believe in my core that he's like a super creepy dude. Yeah. And also... Tommy was sober? Tommy was okay. Um, he I, made this... Uh, incredibly earnest movie that right. I, I will never be convinced otherwise and then once oh. it sort of snowballed into this <laughs> comedy thing they like recut a trailer for it to make it seem like a self-aware comedy and he right. is sort of steered into the skid and he has since raised money to make other things that he thinks is like recapturing the same magic of the room and like no 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 man no. at you it, we were laughing at you like right. you're not you don't yeah. get to play with this game with us. Yeah. Yeah, it all, yeah, part of it is mean spirited. Yeah. Also, it is. which which is fun. Bothers me. Uh, which is fun. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> You're really on to bullying today. Yeah. Well, You're not sure what side you belong on. <laughs> I, I am bullied, so I want to be the bully in any chance that I get. Okay. <laughs> like watching the room. Just grabbing power, yeah. Yeah, any, any possible way that Learning I no lessons throughout life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I saw the trailer for The Disaster Artist, as we all did, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna lie, it looked funny, but... It looks weird. Yeah. Yeah. Seth Rogen, Dave Franco, yeah. sure. Yeah, I know. I, know. I, I couldn't argue with what I saw in the trailer, but also something I've picked up is that any time a trailer is just a scene of a movie, it tends Ooh. to be a bad movie, mm. is what that means. Mm. And so that concerned me. Yeah. Uh, that point. it was just like, one funny scene and also that's the movie like that's the story of making the movie was just he's a train wreck of a person right uh yeah that, that's what i'm worried it, about is that right, it's just so, gonna be us watching right the movie that we know right. is bad be bad well i think it's i think what's going to be good about it is from what i've read the the clip that was released was a lot of james franco as tommy was right and from what i've read that's not going to be a huge part of the movie right yeah i think he's gonna it, I think. he's yeah. gonna pop in and like do some of the scenes in the movie so we can get that sort of fan service of right. this is James Franco doing an impression of a crazy person yeah. doing right. an impression of James Dean in a, doing an impression in a, of himself in a because weird he's movie. alone right yeah. and <laughs> the rest of the movie will be about the other people which I think is a smart right. way to go for this like I don't yeah. want to see yeah. the be kind rewind version of the room starring James Franco and his right. buddies I right. do not want that, to see that yeah I'm sure it exists but sure we don't need to <laughs> all see it I don't want it <laughs> Uh, Red Beard 23, if you could recast any superhero only played by one actor so far, who would you pick? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. I feel like my instincts are leaning me towards Henry Cavill as Superman. Oh, okay. I didn't like him. Yeah. But it's right. so hard to think of a good Superman, Superman. out there. They're very yeah. rare. Yeah. Um, I would say Army Hammer might be a good Superman. He was almost Batman, and yeah. uh, the I don't I don't I want to say George Miller's Justice League movie. He was going to yeah. be Batman. Can I get confirmation that, that it was George Miller? Anyone know that? Justice League. Yeah. Yeah, George Miller. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I was gonna say Andrew Garfield, but I just wish that those movies had never been made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would recast him with nothing, and then <laughs> <laughs> just erase that timeline, just erase that uh, period of that uh, the couple hours of my life, and then also mm -hmm. right. just that series yeah. from existence. That's cheating. That's not answering the question. Yeah, you can't like erase an entire chunk of time. I can try. Yeah, power. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my answer is similar. Ooh. Uh, in that, I wish this movie didn't exist, uh -oh. but I would recast it if it has to. Do we, I know what it is? We all know what it is. Okay. It's Catwoman. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, nailed uh, it. Yeah. Well, how my, do you? Well, go ahead. I mean, I the my Anne Hathaway. No, not. I think okay. Anne Hathaway is a good Do you like Anne Hathaway? I do. I, I, yeah, I, do. I do. She's having. I agree with you. Even though I don't like Joseph Gordon Levitt normally, I like him in Batman as mm -hmm. well. I think I, those two are having fun in that movie, and nobody else is. I agree with you uh, completely. But I would request Halle Berry in the standalone. I would mm -hmm. love to see Olivia Munn as Catwoman. Not Munn. Ooh. Olivia Wilde. Wild. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. I knew that you yes. meant that, even though I, uh, you yeah, said yeah. A, a different word. But <laughs> it's because Olivia yeah. Wilde looks like a. Cat. A cat. Oh, she, she has a cat yeah. quality to yeah. her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She uh, licks her fur a lot. 
She what? <laughs> Like, uh, she grooms herself quite a bit. Uh, oh, that's right. The, in, uh, she's in, well uh, in, in vinyl. She's like yeah. constantly doing <laughs> yeah. that. Was the that's 70s. what vinyl was. Uh, J D Collado asks, any thoughts on Atomic Blonde? I can't f-ing wait for that movie. Yeah, I'm excited. So, uh, Destiny <gasps> Calling. <laughs> it's my big break. <laughs> this is <laughs> as Catwoman. Uh, hey, Bridget, could you make a bad movie, but it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Wilde was somehow watching this live. And yeah, was I was like, like, I think you'd be the best cat woman. <laughs> oh you. my god, that's my dream. I'm going to get a text from Olivia, Olivia Wilde. Wilde telling me to be cat woman. Uh, uh, what Stop a world. blushing. No, <laughs> no, you guys. So, uh, Atomic Blonde is this upcoming. Charlize Theron mm. is some kind of, I guess, Jason Bourne type, where she's yeah. like spy yeah. and uh, uh, sexy and cool and good at weapons and good at fighting. and. I'm not sure what else is going on in this movie. It's, it's yeah. mostly like fighting scenes that they've released so far, and there's a behind the scenes featurette she's that shows one her one actually one. doing this. She's shit. kicking ass. And she's, she's so cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, she's so I'm pretty cool. stoked yeah. about this movie. I think uh, she's the coolest person living. She's yeah. cooler than Daniel Craig as James Bond. Yeah, in, and, uh, in everything she does without effort. I'm not sure if someone said that to me directly or if it was like a, a PR pitch, but either way it felt directed at me that it was a female James Bond and I was like, that's all I've wanted since I was 12 and saw yeah. like James yeah. Bond for the first time. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, the behind the scenes where they showed her fighting and they were like, yeah, I mean, we knew she could fight. We thought we were going to do like four moves and then cut, but then realized like, no, okay. she's super badass. We can film like yeah. a long take of her fight scenes without cutting. Yeah. And it's great. Uh, really made me excited. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be more John Wick-esque. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there seems to be yeah. like an element of that. A lot of song yeah. Song. And, uh, well choreographed long yes. fight scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of that. I heard there's a lot of music in it because it takes place oh. in the Cold War time. Those, those the things, 80s, those I aren't believe. connected to me. Oh, because uh, 80s songs. Okay. 80s songs. Yeah, the Cold War was a long. Yeah, you're right. Remember all the music during the Cold War? <laughs> Remember oh, those great music. Cold War songs? Um, uh, oh man. Atomic Blonde and Valerian: City of a Thousand Planets are two movies that I'm. I, I've never been more excited about seeing movies that I don't know anything about. Uh, just, like yeah. from the visuals and from all the the weird choreography and was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm here for it. I can't wait to see girl and boy fight the planets. That's what Valerian could be about. Sure. I've matter. never had such opposite feelings about two movies <laughs> as Atomic Blonde and Valerian as like Atomic Blonde super want to see Valerian uh, reads like Shark Boy and Lava Girl mm-hmm. to me. Ooh, uh, there are bits of that. <laughs> when I was watching, it, I was like, who is this for? It, it, it felt like it should have been like a mid two thousands uh, Disney Channel original movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I saw parts of it, oh. so I'm a little confused. There's a little and bit not of an Xena exciting girl twenty first century right. <laughs> uh, elements in there. Well, we're all going to see it this week, okay. so we can talk about it next yep, week on the sure, show. Right. Uh, Sir Edward the Head, will people even read the Song of Ice and Fire books now that the show is going to finish first? Yes, I think, so. I think probably. So. Yeah. There are, some, there are some characters that are alive in the books that aren't in the mm-hmm. show anymore, and vice versa. And there's, uh, like, some of the best parts of the books for me are all the, the flashback and stories told about Robert's Rebellion. That's where we, yeah. we, we have all the stories of, of these cool warriors right. and, and how mm-hmm. they, they came to such renown. Like, right. Now in the show, someone's like, Paris and Selmy, I saw you fight, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, we're not gonna see that, and then they just like go, and the book like digs into like what these battles right. were, and, and and just all these flashbacks about where everyone came from is neat to me. Yeah, I think people will definitely read them. Like, if we're gonna read the Harry Potter textbook, we're gonna read the Song of Ice we're and Fire. Read both of those Harry. Yeah, Potter. if all our cousins, yeah. if all our cousins are gonna read that, we'll <laughs> read the Song of Ice and Fire. But uh, I think the the real question is, does it then discredit the TV show? Like when we look back on the TV show in ten mm-hmm. years. Is it like, oh, that was trash fan fiction? Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, I think, well, yeah. with Ed Sheeran, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. Oh, that was trash that's, fan yeah, fiction. Yeah, I that's really sh- where it jumped the shark. I think the show will, will always be a better version of the books because they just cu- they streamlined a lot. They cut out yeah. a lot mm-hmm. of him sort of finding out what's going on as he writes it. Right. Uh, but food, food, I, food, <laughs> food, <laughs> food. <laughs> food. <laughs> 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 so 
with food descriptions, I know what a pie looks like. He lives in a lighthouse, typing with one finger on a typewriter, <laughs> food over and over again. <laughs> He's writing like in the shining. <laughs> yes. Food, food, food. I do. Uh, I'm curious because um, he likes to hide in little nerdy things in his books, right. and one of the things Just that he did, you, because he's a, he's a, yes, well, yes, <laughs> um, so he's a huge Giants fan, mm -hmm. so he uh, made one of the Giants, his name One One, which is like Eleven, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Phil Simms from the Giants, it's a, big, it's, it's, it's a, it's a guy for us, and uh, he talks about a story about a, a brave patriot that won all these battles in a row, and then on the, the mm -hmm. I think, 17th battle, oh, he lost, he lost to a giant. Yep. And it's super great, because it's like, I think the, the guy's name is some version of Bill Belichick, and I, and I <laughs> love it. That's so pretty good. I want to that's see... Weird. If <laughs> that's weird! That's weird! I didn't know that, that's pretty great. That's I didn't kind of weird. So, <laughs> that the coach of the Patriots is like, hey, George, did you uh, fucking kill me in your book? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you have a giant step on me? Like, <laughs> that's so weird. That's like a J.R. token, like, wrote about like Winston Churchill and, like in the Lord of the Rings. I, but uh, I, I, it could be about that. Should Winston Churchill and Bill Belichick are both sort of strategic masterminds, so I see, yeah. I see that working. Um, but I bring it up because I wonder if he's going to take any kind of jab at Weiss and Ooh. Benioff as people who, like Hot Pie is working on a place some, some, some right. like lovable chubby guys making a pie, and then these two dorks come in and like get their fingers in it, and now the pie is worse. And then they yeah. leave and like die somewhere and make make before they die they're like, what about a, a big book about being racist? <laughs> so I, I'm reading them to see if he's gonna sneak in any jabs at HBO or those two oh, because he's funny. gotta be mad at them. That's interesting. Yeah, mm. but I think that uh, might get me to read these books. Yeah, I read did, it. Uh, there's, there's slight jabs. Did you not read any of the books at all? Am I the? Am I the, the I read the soldier? first three, oh. and then. I read so busy. <laughs> I just hit a dime. Uh, I read the cliff the notes. Of the mules. <laughs> I read the cliff notes. Hmm. I've, I've been on the wikis. Well, I feel like I've caught up. <laughs> Sounds like a poorly chosen question for our final question. <laughs> uh, that's all I. What was that noise? Are you cat noise or rewind uh, noise? Ru uh oh. Oh, rut row? Okay. Rut row. Not a cat, that's a dog. Okay, got it. Famous dog. <laughs> I'm gunning for um, the next cat woman. I will fight you. <laughs> Maggie, <laughs> thank you for joining me as always. Um, do you have anything to plug and do you want to give your Twitter name out there? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, you can find me at uh, Maggie Mayfish and I post stuff that I do on there. So mm -hmm. come talk to me. Bridget. You can find me on Twitter at Bridget Tweets. Bridget with two T's. That is a great handle. Yeah. I'm so glad that you got that. Yeah, yeah. So th but Bridget tweets is three, three, three T's. Three T's in a row. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> it weakens it a bit. Yeah. That's pretty rough. Yeah. I'm Daniel O'Brien. You can find me at <laughs> D-O-B underscore I-N-C. We'll be doing this show every week, so check it out. Bye. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching that video. Make sure you click the big C in the middle to subscribe. Click one of the other videos that you see to watch those videos. Click the big dumb YouTube bell. It will alert you when we have new videos coming out. And uh, for every like this gets, Maggie will be the next Catwoman. For every reply this gets, Bridget will be the next Catwoman. You decide.